Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri. Today, my video is about how do we convert an ASP.NET 6.0 application from using SQL Server to using SQL Lite. And we will do the opposite. We will see how to convert an ASP.NET 6.0 application from using SQL Lite to using SQL Server. Let's start by creating an application that uses SQL Server. So to do that, we will start by creating an ASP.NET 6.0 Razor Pages application that uses individual authentication and SQL Server. So the command for that would be .NET new Razor and we're going to use individual authentication. And this switch is important, use local DB. This essentially installs all the necessary logic and packages in order to talk to SQL Server. And our output directory will be SQL Server to SQLite. Now let us go into this new directory. If I run this application and go to this URL and try to register, I'm going to get an error. And the error is that I don't have a SQL Server database on this Mac. But it doesn't matter because we don't really want to talk to SQL Server, we want to talk to SQL Lite. So I'm going to just ignore this and convert my application so that it uses SQL Lite and not SQL Server. So let me go into VS Code now and have a look. The first thing we look at is the app settings.json here. And you can see that there is a connection string here for SQL Server. This local DB actually is SQL Server. I don't want to use SQL Server, but I want to use SQL Lite. Therefore, I'm going to use a connection string here that is targeting SQL Lite. And it looks something like this. You can say data source, and our data source is the name of a file that will hold SQLite. Now I want you to know that SQLite is a type of database that does not need a server like SQL Server or MySQL. It is simply a file that would reside in your application and we will call this app.db semicolon cache equals to shared. This is the connection string for SQLite. I'm going to close this and the next file we need to look at is the csproj file. So let me open this csproj file and here you can see that this is using the SQL Server package. I can either just edit it from here and change it to simply SQL Lite or I can go back to the terminal window and do it there by running some .NET add package and .NET remove package commands. So let me take the latter approach. Here I'm going to enter the command .NET remove package Microsoft Entity Framework SQL Server which is going to remove this from here. Let's do that. When I do this you will notice that that line has been removed from my csproj file. Next let us add the SQL Server package. So that would be this .NET add package Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Lite. And if you do that, it's just gonna add it right here. Next, let's go into the program.cs file. And this needs to be changed to SQL Lite. Finally, if you go into the data migrations folder and you look at this migration, these are the commands that create the tables that are needed to manage users and roles. But these commands, they actually target SQL Server. Now, since we want to use SQL Lite, we need to delete these. So I'm going to delete this entire migrations folder. And we will create our own migrations that target SQL Lite. The command for that is .NET ef migrations add and we'll call the migration m1 and the output directory would be data slash migrations. This creates 
a new data migrations folder and this migration targets SQLite. Now we can apply this migration by going .NET EF database update. This will create for us the database and the tables. When this is done, you will notice here that we have a file called app.db. This is the SQLite database. Let us run this app so that we can register a user and make sure the data is being added to the appropriate tables in the database. So we'll do a .NET watch here. And let me register a user here. Click on register. And I get this message, click here to confirm your account. I will do that. And now let me try to log in with that account. AA at AA.AA. .aa. And you can see that I'm logged in at this point. Let me log out. And I'll close the browser and stop this application. Now we know that our application is using SQLite and not SQL Server. One last thing we can do is I have installed an extension here, which is this one, SQLite. This allows me to right click on app.db and choose open database. When I do that, I get this new tab here. I'm going to expand app.db and go down to app net users and choose show table. And you can see here that my data has gone into SQLite. Now I will do the opposite. I will start with a SQLite application and I'll convert it to SQL Server. So let me close this and go back and I will start a SQLite application and it will also be a Razor Pages application. So for that, we're going to do .NET new Razor and minus minus auth individual and the output directory will be SQLite to SQL Server. Hit enter here and let's go into that directory. The default for creating an application with individual authentication is that it uses SQLite. If you want to use SQL Server, you have to use the switch minus minus use local DB, which we did not do here. Let us open this application in VS Code. And you can see here that we have our app.db, which indicates that we are using SQLite. Since I want to use SQL Server, I'm going to delete this. Let us also check the app settings.json and you can see here that it is using a connection string for SQLite. I need to change this to SQL Server. Now the connection string I want to use for SQL Server depends on how I'm going to connect to SQL Server. I'm going to give you two examples on how one can possibly connect to SQL Server and of course there are others. But suppose you want to use SQL Server Express which really doesn't run on a Mac, it only runs on Windows and the connection string for that would be SQL Express, the database, we'll call it app.db and you put in this trusted connection true, multiple active result sets equals to true. So this is the connection string for SQL Server Express. In my case, because I'm running on a Mac, I will not be using this. Instead, I'm going to run SQL Server in a container. And the command for running SQL Server in a container is as follows. The image is this. I'm going to name the container AZSQL. It's going to expose the default port number of SQL Server, which is 1433 to B1444 on the host machine. And the SA password is SQL password. So I'm going to copy this and run it in a terminal window to start my SQL Server container. With Docker PS, you can check that the container is running and you can see here that it's running for the last 10 seconds. I'm going to run it again and it says 28 seconds. So I know that I've got SQL Server running in a container. We must change the connection string in app settings.json so that it points to SQL Server. So we're going to delete this and instead 
paste the connection string for SQL Server, which would be this. Next, we will go to our csproj file, which is this one here. This has a package for SQLite installed, but we want to use SQL Server, so we change this simply to SQL Server. Since I changed this to use SQL Server and not SQLite, it's a good idea to come here and do a .NET restore. So this is going to restore all the packages. Now, if I go to program.cs, there is an error here because we do not have a, any package that supports SQLite. So we need to change this to SQL Server. The last thing we need to do is delete these migrations. So under data migrations, I'm going to delete the entire migrations folder because I want to create my own migrations that target SQL Server. So let's do this again. .NET EF migrations add m1 minus o data slash migrations. We will now find that in the migrations folder we have a new set of migrations that target SQL Server. Now to apply these migrations and create the database and the tables we need to do .NET EF database update and those commands in the migrations file will be applied to the database and you can see here that a bunch of commands are being executed. Now we can run our app and see if it works. So I'm going to do .NET watch run and let me register a user. So I'm going to do xx at xx.xx and password and if I click on register it seems to have done the job. I'll click on this to confirm my email and now let me log in xx at xx.xx and you can see now that I was able to log in. So I'm going to log out. We know now that SQL Server is being used instead of SQL Lite. I'm going to close my browser and stop my application. Now I've got an application called Azure Data Studio installed on my machine. You can also install it. It is free of charge and that allows me to have a look at the data in SQL Server. So I'm going to start Azure Data Studio and I will create a new connection to my database that's running in a container. The server would be localhost, 1444. The authentication type is SQL login. The username is SA and the password is the password I mentioned to you before when I started the container. So let me connect. So now it has connected. If I expand databases, I have this database that I created. And here are the tables. I'm going to choose ASP.NET users, right click and select top 1000. And here we are. We have the data that I entered into the database. I hope that you benefited from this video where we learned how to convert a SQL Server application into SQL Lite and we did the opposite. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.